Hello everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to configure your store settings within Shipping Easy. These are store specific settings that customize the experience for both you and your customers, and they cover everything from adding your store logo to selecting which email confirmation is sent for your orders. Each store type can have unique settings that will appear only for that store. You can customize all settings or keep them similar. I'll be sure to cover both, so let's get started. To get to store settings, click settings in the top right, then stores and orders in the bottom left under integrations. All your connected stores are listed here. You'll want to adjust the settings for each store individually. Even if you don't have a connected store and just do manual or CSV orders, where you enter orders by hand or by uploading a spreadsheet of information, you still want to adjust the settings for the manual orders store at the very bottom or any CSV store that you add. Separate settings for each store allow you to do things like use customized logos and emails. I'll start with my eBay store. Just click the logo to access the settings. At the top are five tabs to make it easier to navigate. Store info, branding, products, orders, and notifications. We'll start on the store info tab. These first four fields at the top are used when Shipping Easy pulls information for this store and you want to include it on, say, a packing slip or a confirmation email. To place certain pieces of information, say a logo on a packing slip, you will use a variable that imports this information from the store the order came from. One thing to note is that the phone number is not included in our default templates, but if you add the phone number variable to a template, this is where it will pull from. This is why it's important to check your store settings to ensure that the information you have is okay for your customer to see. You can add or remove variables to any of your templates at any time. Check this link to learn how to customize your packing slips and learn more about variables. Below that we have the shipping address. This drop down contains all your different ship from addresses saved on your account. You can add to this list by going to the store addresses section of the settings page. Select the one you want for this store. Then the ship from postal code below actually determines what zip code the packages are originating from. If the zip code you enter into this field matches the one listed in the shipping address field directly above, you can leave it blank. As you can see, I currently have my address set to ship from Santa's house in Alaska, so I have to set the ship from postal code to reflect where my packages are actually coming from here in Austin, Texas. Note that the shipping address is used to calculate the rate unless there is a ship from postal code, which will override the shipping address but only for USPS. None of the other carriers will recognize the ship from postal code. Be sure to hit save before changing tabs, as each tab is saved individually. On the branding tab, this is where you can upload the logo for this store to appear in different places. The first upload appears on emails and packing slips. The second upload appears on the label itself, but only on USPS labels. Whatever you upload in either location must be under a megabyte in size and either JPEG or PNG format. Something to note about putting your logo on the shipping label, if your logo indicates the contents of the package, it can invalidate any insurance claims you might want to make in the event of something happening to the package. Use caution to avoid any thefts or other issues when processing insurance claims. At the bottom is the packing slip message. This is a short message that appears at the bottom of packing slips. If you don't use packing slips, your customer will never see what's written here, so you can leave it blank. Otherwise, I recommend keeping this short, just a couple sentences. Otherwise, it can turn a one-page packing slip into a two-page packing slip. Hit save at the bottom, and let's go to the products tab. We only have two checkboxes on this page to address. The majority of settings on this page assist in importing and leaking products from your store or marketplace. Those settings are useful with our inventory management solution. Check out the link on your screen right now to see our inventory setup playlist and learn all about what the rest of this page offers. The two checkboxes at the top apply to everyone. The first checkbox ensures that any product with a SKU in a downloaded order will be automatically added to your Shipping Easy product catalog. If you do not want to populate your product catalog this way, uncheck this box. The second checkbox will adjust how much detail about your products are displayed on the packing slip and confirmation emails. If you find yourself displaying too much or not enough information about your products within Shipping Easy, adjust this setting here. Examples of this are showing size, color, and style of your products. Hit save at the bottom, and let's go to the Orders tab. On the Orders tab, we have two checkboxes at the top. This one turns off automatic order downloads. If this box is checked, Shipping Easy will not automatically pull in orders from your connected store. You'll need to use the Sync button on the Orders page. 
Either way, Shipping Easy brings them over without the need to copy and paste any information to produce a label. The other checkbox will standardize your addresses so that they all look the same after they have been verified, but it won't do anything if it can't verify the address. Right below that is the most important section of the Orders tab, the Enabled Order Statuses section. This section is where you determine which orders are downloaded from your store when Shipping Easy does its hourly check, and it's based on the status of these. Each store can have different statuses, so I'll show you a few examples right now. You want to ensure the only statuses selected are the ones that represent an order that's ready to be shipped, and in some case, these are completely customizable, but you want to be certain the status is at least paid so you don't actually send out an order that's not yet been paid for. Also, some store platforms don't have any options here at all, so don't be alarmed if yours doesn't. Hit save at the bottom and let's go to the last tab, Notifications. The Notifications tab is where you determine when and what confirmation email your customer receives from this store, and whether you want a copy of them. If you post-date your labels, this drop-down at the top of the page allows you to delay updating back to your store that the order is shipped until the date for which the label is post-dated. If you select the time, it will wait until that day and time to update your store. If you don't select anything, it will send the update immediately when the label is purchased, regardless of date. Below that, we have the confirmation email settings. You have full control over whether or not Shipping Easy sends your customer email notifications. The first checkbox sends your customer a shipment confirmation. The second checkbox sends a delivery confirmation. If your store has these turned on on the store side, and Shipping Easy has them turned on here, your customer will get two emails, so be sure to have them turned on only in one location to avoid this. The template drop-downs here contain Shipping Easy's default template and customized templates you've made. If you haven't made any, it will only contain the defaults. You can create personalized templates in the settings menu. The return email settings box determines whether or not we email return labels you've purchased to the customer automatically. It doesn't purchase return labels on its own, and if you never purchase return labels with us, this box will have no effect on your process. But it does make getting those return labels to your customer super easy. Finally, at the bottom, we have reply to and BCC settings. The first two fields only need to be filled in if you want to receive copies of the emails that go to your customer. If you don't want those, leave them blank. It's best practice to fill in a reply to email at the bottom, however. If the customer responds to an email that you sent them, the email address you put in this field is where the reply will be sent. Hit save for the final time, and you're done! If you saw something in your store settings page I didn't go over, be sure and check out the full breakdown on our basic shipping setup guide at shippingeasy.com slash self-setup. Thanks for watching, everyone.